the doctor gave me a long list when I got out of the hospital about the various lifestyle changes that I was going to need to make. And what I've discovered since then is that I'm really good at the don'ts, right? Like, so no more soda, no more red meat, no more adding butter and salt to stuff, no more full fat dairy, no more processed meats. And, and yes, I miss the hot pockets already, but I've done really well with all of that stuff. Where I'm really falling short is with the do's. Right, like do eat fresh fruits, eat fresh vegetables, exercise regularly, that kind of stuff. I'm having trouble with that. Anyway, that got me to thinking about how full of shit the Bible is. Because most things get me thinking about that. But think about it, though. They claim that the Bible is this great source of morality, but it's all a bunch of easy ass don'ts. I mean, how much effort does one have to expend in not killing and not stealing? How much time do you have to set aside in your life for the effort of not carving graven images. This is moral obligation on easy mode. Nine out of 11 of the 10 commandments is a don't. And the only do's are keep the Sabbath day holy and honor thy mother and father, which are a terrible moral advice, but B largely passive instructions in a hierarchical society that takes the Sabbath off already. And this holds even if you zoom out because obviously the 10 commandments are just 11 or 12, depending on how you count them, of the 613 commandments in the Bible. And about two-thirds of those are don'ts. And the majority of the do's are things that only apply to priests and have nothing at all to do with morality. If you legit got your morality from the Bible's commandments, well, well huh, then you probably kill Amalekites and massacre a lot of livestock, I guess. But setting aside all the laughable specifics, even if you just got your concept of morality from the Bible, you would think that morality was, by and large, a passive thing. That good is the mere absence of bad. Talk about the bare fucking minimum. These motherfuckers want a, I didn't murder anyone again today cookie. And, and it honestly, it shows in their morality across the board. It shows in that sort of bootstraps libertarianism born of the delusion of self-sufficiency so common among American evangelicals. Your problems are your problems. I already didn't covet my neighbor's wife twice today, so I've met my own moral obligations for this week. It shows in their resistance to a strong social safety net and a reasonable minimum wage. It shows in the ease with which they dismiss the inherent biases of society and the hardships that those impose on minorities. That Their morality is internal, right? So unless they're personally, consciously, actively causing you harm, they have no moral obligations to address your problems at all. Now, of course, a Christian listening to this would be screaming the golden rule into their headphones by this point as though that overhyped motivational poster of an ethic lit could save them. I mean, sure, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. That technically is a do, but it's an entirely internal one. A person unburdened by, say, centuries of institutional prejudice and the construction of the society they live in might say, I just want to be left alone. Now that person has no moral obligations to do any act of good in society. And, and beyond that, it's infinitely malleable. I mean, I just, just, just ask a homophobe that uses their Christianity to justify their bigotry how that comports with the golden rule. Right. Instead of imagining what it would be like if their love was dismissed and their marriage was illegal, they tell you how they'd want others to lead them away from their sinful ways. Because, you know, when what you want is the metric, you can put the goalposts any fucking where you want them. Morality is more than that. It's not enough to just treat LGBTQ people as your equals. You have to use your position of privilege to fight for their equality. It's not enough to not see race. You have to work to dismantle the institutional barriers to equality. It's not enough to help the poor. You also have to actively work to keep people out of poverty. Thou shalt not is the bare minimum, not the aspiration. And that's a humanist ethic. Right. That's a morality that's born of our obligation to each other, as opposed to our obligation to some fictitious deity. And it's what naturally arises from our innate sense of right and wrong, so long as that isn't hijacked by some fucking religion along the way.